Arkham Horror is a card game released by Fantasy Flight Games in 2016 and has grown rapidly with a huge amount of expansions. In this video we're going to learn how to play the game from the core box. There's no major spoilers in this, only a couple of minor ones which you get when you open the box anyway. The game is a cooperative game played by two players, each controlling an investigator. It can also be played solo with one or two investigators controlled by a single player, or up to four players with two core boxes. Each of the investigators have their own card with a character background and skills printed on it. These skills cover willpower, intellect, combat and agility, and they will be used in the various skill tests as the game progresses. The higher the better. Also listed here are any special abilities the character has, such as getting clues when defeating an enemy and the outcome should the Eldar sign token be drawn in a test. Each character has a deck of at least 30 player cards. These cover assets, skills and events that will be used as the scenario progresses, then takes 5 resources from the pool. These will be used to pay for cards as they are played in the game. Next the players read the scenario information for the specific scenario being played, operative and context and also possibly supply information for decisions to be made later in the game. Put all the other tokens, the horror, the damage, the clues and doom within reach of the players. Create the chaos bag by taking the amount of chaos tokens and putting them into an opaque container, such as a bag, bowl, cup or whatever is to hand. The tokens you include sets how difficult the game will be and includes tokens that trigger certain outcomes depending on the scenario. Here the Elder Sign token is used for the player's ability as set out on their card when we mentioned it earlier. There are also other tokens here which will be used with the instructions on the scenario card. Next, the players assemble the encounter deck from the specified encounter cards for the scenario. These cards represent the dark forces that work against the players in the investigation. The cards are specific symbols for easily locating them and shuffle this deck together, set it within easy reach of all the players. Then take the act deck and the agenda deck, read the information on the front of the act card marked Act 1A. This also may give clues to what is about to unfold in the scenario and sets the scene. Follow the instructions for setting up the location cards. In the first scenario, this is the study card. One side of this card is the revealed side, the other the unrevealed side. When the investigators move to a new location, the card is flipped to the revealed side and any instructions on the card are followed. In the first scenario, the investigators begin in the study so the card is flipped immediately. On the revealed side, we have the card text and two numbers. One is the shroud value and the other is the number of clues that location has. The little figure indicates this is the amount per investigator in the game. Here we have two investigators, so four clues are placed on the location. Also place your investigator mini cards here as well. The players then shuffle their individual decks and five cards are drawn. Any weakness cards are immediately shuffled back into the deck at this point another the card is drawn in its place. Also players have a chance to mulligan their hand by leaving aside any cards they don't want and drawing an equal number from the deck. Then shuffle the deck including the set aside cards. Choose a lead investigator whose decision will be final and you are now ready to start. The game is played through a series of rounds per turn. The mythos phase, the enemy phase, the investigator phase and upkeep phase. Each of these phases have their own sub-phases and these have to be completed before moving on to the next phase. The first game turn always begins with the investigator phase in which each investigator has three actions. An investigator can draw a resource token, draw a new deck card, activate an action trigger on a card, engage an enemy, investigate their location, move to a new location if possible, play an asset or event card from their hand, or evade an enemy or even fight an enemy. These can be taken in any order but all three actions must be taken before an investigator takes their turn. To play a card, the investigator pays the amount in resources as indicated by the number in the top corner. If the card is an event, the results are resolved immediately then the card is discarded. If the card is an asset card, then the card is placed in the player's play area and remains in use until the game dictates otherwise. Players can only carry a certain number of assets with a slot symbol. 
This symbol is shown by the symbol on the card and these include accessory, body, ally, hand and arcane slots. There are also two slots each of hand and arcane. Skill cards are used during skill tests to improve the probability of passing a test. Some cards also have the fast keyword. This means that they don't cost an action to play. Advancement in Arkham Horror is based on the skills test and these are central to winning or losing the game. A test usually has a number to beat set against the investigator's skill value. When the value is known, draw a chaos token from the chaos bag and add or subtract this from the player's skill value for that test. For the test to be successful, the player must either equal or beat the test value. Assets can help with skill tests by modifying the final required score and cards that an investigator holds in their hand can also be used in skill tests. One way is by playing a skill card, paying the resources and following the instructions on the card. Other cards can be used for free when committed to a skill test. Just use the skill icon on the left of the card to add to the skill value of the investigator. A question mark icon can be used for any skill test. Skill tests include combat against an enemy or evading an enemy that is engaged with you. If you are fighting with an enemy and you are successful, you will deal out damage, hopefully enough to dispatch them back to the shadows. Evading an enemy will leave them exhausted and stops them from attacking you back. It also leaves you free to do any other actions without an attack of opportunity from your foe. Another important skill test is investigation. This is used when an investigator is attempting to gain clues from their location to advance the act. These tests are played against the shroud value of the location pitted against the investigator's intellect skill value. Gathering clues is key to advancing the act and pushing the scenario towards its end. When enough clues have been gathered, the act card is flipped and the bag side read out with any instructions followed. Try to do this as quickly and as often as possible. Once all the investigators have taken their turns, the game moves into the enemy phase. Enemies engage with an investigator will attack, causing damage and horror as instructed on their cards. Hunter enemies will move towards the investigator's location and engage if they can. An investigator taking an equal amount of damage or horror to their limit is eliminated from the game. After all enemies have taken their turn, the game moves into the upkeep phase and all exhausted cards are reset. Unengaged enemies engage with investigators in their location. The investigators draw a new card, take a new resource. If any of the players have more than 8 cards in hand, they discard down to 8. The Mythos phase normally starts a turn, except in the very first game turn. In the Mythos phase, one Doom token is placed on the agenda deck. If the number of Doom tokens matches or exceeds the amount of Doom threshold, then this card is flipped. Tokens are discarded and any instructions and the card's text are followed. This is the ticking clock of the game and is an ever-present threat to ending. Next, each player draws a card from the encounter deck. This consists of the enemies and events that are out to thwart the investigation. These are either treachery cards or enemy cards. Treachery cards are played immediately with any effects resolved. The enemy cards spawn creatures engaged with the investigator who drew the card unless there are specific instructions for the spawn location. This finally ends the Mythos phase and moves us back onto the Investigator phase again. So that is the basic how to play. However, there is a lot more to the game and each scenario adds more layers as you progress through the first campaign. In between scenarios, the Investigators can change cards in their deck depending on the amount of experience points they gain during an investigation. This helps to upgrade their choices and also develops them as characters. Beyond this, experienced players can organise their decks as they wish beyond the recommended decks that are included examples in the rules. This gives players a customised deck when fighting against the forces of evil. Thank you for listening to this how to play Arkham Horror the Card Game. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit subscribe and stay tuned for more how to play videos.